Welcome to this uh, first ever live broadcast of Gil Reads Comics, uh, a format which I'm tentatively calling Coffee and Comics, because when I do this, it's likely going to have to be a Saturday or Sunday morning, and at that time, I will almost definitely be drinking coffee. And in this case, I have a nitro cold brew, Cold Brutus, and this is very appropriate for what we're going to be talking about today, and that's Punisher Season 2. If I, if I read you the back of what's written on this can, when you need cold brew coffee, you don't settle for something a fragile Pomeranian named Bubbles would sip from a champagne flute. You want it bold, but not aggressive. Fierce, but with a heart of gold. You want a cold Brutus. Cold Brutus. It's coffee with an attitude. That's something the Punisher would drink. So we'll crack this open. And one thing I'm noticing is that Periscope sort of zooms out or zooms in when you start the recording. So hopefully you can tell I'm wearing my Punisher shirt. And a uh, funny story about this shirt that a few years ago, maybe more than a few years ago, I went to a Halloween party dressed up as the Punisher. So my costume was this t shirt a pair of jeans, and then a holster with a fake gun, you know, on my, on my hip. And when I got into the party, well, before I got out of my car, I started to feel self-conscious about bringing a toy gun into the party. And I started to think, would people find that offensive? Maybe somebody would think that it's, uh, it's not cool to have a, even if it's a pretend gun, to bring that into a Halloween party. So I left it in the car. So I walked into the Halloween party, Punisher t-shirt, just a holster, no gun. I'm sitting there and I sort of notice on the other side of the room a couple of people uh, gesture towards me. And then one of them says, I overhear it, they go, it's just a t-shirt with a skull on it. So A, who just sits at a party, at a Halloween party and just judges what other people are wearing? And I guess this was before Punisher was popular. This was before the Netflix shows. So maybe a lot of people didn't know who Punisher was. But still, I thought that comment was unnecessary. Anyway, today we're talking about Punisher Season 2. And before I go into what I thought of this season, I want to tell you that I'm a huge Punisher fan. I grew up loving the Punisher. It probably started just because as a kid I'm reading comics and you see Batman catch the Joker a thousand times, he puts him away, the Joker gets out, and the Joker is a murderer, he kills people. So you just want Batman to put that guy down. And then I discovered the Punisher, an anti-hero, a guy that actually kills the bad guy. So as a kid, I thought that was awesome. I read tons of Punisher comics, maybe not the best thing to read, as a child, but I loved The Punisher growing up. When I was in college, I devoured the whole Garth Ennis run and everything that followed that from the, uh, from the Max line of comics. And back then, it was a dream of mine that one day HBO or some other premium network would create a Punisher TV show and do the comic, do the character justice. And then my mind exploded when I found out that Daredevil season two was going to have the Punisher in it. And they did it so right. The character was perfect. Every action scene was awesome. Daredevil Season 2, Punisher, incredible. When, Dare, when, uh, when they announced the Punisher spinoff, before, I remember when Season 1 was about to drop. It was, uh, it was a Thursday night. And I thought it would be crazy to wake up at 3 in the morning. Because I'm on the East Coast, so when Netflix premieres a new show at midnight... That's midnight if you're in LA. Here in the East Coast in New York, midnight is three in the morning. So I thought it would be crazy to wake up at 3 a.m. and watch Punisher the moment it drops. And I wasn't gonna do it, I didn't set an alarm or anything, but I was so excited. I woke up on my own about 4 a.m. and I figured, what the hell, I might as well put it on. And I watched two or three episodes before going into work and I loved the show. The tone of it was perfect. I love what they did with the character. I loved it so much that that weekend, that same weekend that the Punisher season one premiered, I was running a half marathon. And when I started the race, I thought of the Punisher, his singular goal and the anger and just how awesome he is. And I ran my fastest half marathon ever 
because of the, the motivation from Frank Castle. And then I finished season one and I thought it was fantastic. I think some people who are purists and are fans of the Punisher comic, when they watch the John Barenthal Netflix version of Punisher, one of the criticisms they might lob at the show is that this iteration of Frank Castle is a lot more emotional. He struggles a lot more with the idea of killing. He's not the straight up soulless, emotionless, almost sociopathic killing machine he is in the comics. But honestly, I think I prefer, I, don't, I won't say I prefer the Netflix show to the comics, but I prefer their interpretation of the character. I think injecting some humanity into Frank Castle while still letting him be a badass has made him a more interesting character. It gives the actor, John Barenthal, more to do. So I'm saying all this to basically tell you that I'm a huge fan and I went into season two of Netflix, uh, of Netflix's Punisher, which I just finished last night. I went into the season wanting to love the show. Season one, as you can tell, obviously I loved it. I do think it dragged a little bit. I don't think 13 episodes uh, was necessary, but overall I loved the season. And I'll say, especially, um, is one, one particular scene that encapsulates what I think the show did so well. If you go to episode three, when they do the flashback of Frank in combat, and he basically goes into enemy territory on his own and just tears the bad guys apart. It's a great action sequence, but it ends very emotionally where it sort of plays this soft kind of anti-war song while Frank just brutalizes somebody and gets covered in blood. That scene encapsulates what worked so well in Punisher Season 1 because what worked so well is the great balance of action, violence, and emotion, character development. So, Season 1, fantastic. Season 2. Episode 1 I thought was excellent. Loved Episode 1 for some of the same reasons I laid out for Season 1 of Punisher. Uh, I'll say that the idea of Frank meeting another woman after Marie and trying to start up any kind of relationship is a tough pill to swallow. And it's, again, something that purists, fans of the comic, might scoff at. But I actually thought it worked really well. It was believable. And, uh, and not only that, but episode one also had the fight in the bar. So once again, the show struck this great balance between action and violence, but it's all motivated by character, drama. And then something happened where uh, that young young girl, I think her name is Amy, uh, her character shows up. And nothing against the actress, but something about her character just didn't feel quite right. Her, her sassy attitude all felt kind of put on and forced. It felt like they were going for a character trope that we've seen a million times before. And even the idea of an older badass guy taking care of a younger girl just seems like such a played out concept by this point. You know, Last of Us, the video game, Logan. I'm sure there are others that I'm forgetting right now, but seeing that storyline just felt uncreative and like a repeat of stuff that we've seen before. But I stuck with it. Uh, in fact, I was watching the show with my brother and I wanted to love Punisher season two so much that we had a deal where he started making some comments about you know things that weren't working too well for him. He started to point out the fact that it seems like just about everyone besides John Barenthal in season two is doing just not doing a great job in the acting department. And I, I personally don't think it's all about the acting. I think part of it is just maybe poor writing for some of the supporting characters. But anyway, he was starting to point out some of the flaws. And I told him, I want to enjoy this season of Punisher. I don't care if it has problems. I just want to, I want to love this show. So we had a deal where he wasn't allowed to criticize the show or say anything bad about it until we finished the season. So we started to power through and eventually we kind of broke. I started watching it on my own so I didn't have to even listen to his criticisms. Um, but it's impossible to deny that the show started to go off the rails a bit in certain ways. So I already mentioned the Amy character, who I would say, at least in the first half of the season, was just frustrating to watch. Felt like a character trope. Uh, the whole sassy attitude just felt over the top. 
I do think her character turned a corner in the second half of the season when she started to become more vulnerable. I think when the writers gave her more to do, her character stopped bothering me. I actually thought they did a good job with her in the second half. But just about every other supporting character just felt like they came out of a B movie. The writing for them wasn't solid. The acting was pretty rough. And then you have the villain, this uh, basically Christian fundamentalist, um, but super violent, evil guy. His character felt like they were just trying a little bit too hard. They give him this weird affect with his voice where he talks like this constantly. I'm going to get Frank Castle and he will see the way of the Lord. Just this weird voice and you can just tell what they're going for. They're going for that villain that has a really strange mannerism, really strange mannerisms and just quotes the Bible constantly. I never really quite bought that character. It never really found him all that interesting. Similar to Amy, I think towards the end of the season, I mean, with, with this character, I think they called him Pilgrim. If you fast forward to the last three or four episodes of the season, he does start to become a little more interesting. I should say at this point, by the way, minor spoilers. I'm going give to give away some minor spoilers. Um, and if I do go into any big spoiler territory, I'll give you fair warning. So, uh, so I've pointed out some of the flaws of the show. Right, you've got the Amy character got better in the second half. The villain character got better in maybe the last third or fourth, uh, fourth part of the season. Um, and then I mentioned season one dragged a little bit. Season two dragged a lot. And I would say specifically with the Billy Russo character. I did not find the relationship between him and the psychiatrist interesting and any way shape or form Uh, and that's mostly because I just didn't buy it for a second the chances that Billy Russo is gonna end up in the hospital with this psychotic psychiatrist who the more we learn about her you know without going too much into spoilers you know I should probably just say up front that this is gonna be a lot easier to discuss if we allow for spoilers so I'm gonna spoil Punisher season 2 if that's okay with everybody the relationship between Billy Russo and the psychiatrist. I just didn't buy for a second. It's just too over the top and ridiculous that this psychiatrist, she's not just a little off. She doesn't just have a few character flaws. As you peel layers away, she's outright evil and insane. So I just didn't buy that. And every time the show cut to her house with her and Billy, the show just dragged. And I actually started to feel claustrophobic. Just, I just didn't want to be in that house anymore with Billy and the psychiatrist because I don't find it interesting. I don't buy her character. Um, Billy acting crazy, like, I can't remember anything. Why would they do this to me? The, the emotion of all that just felt over the top. I just didn't buy it. It felt like something out of a soap opera. So that alone really dragged the show down. Now, where the show did great, as always, is John Barenthal. He's the only thing that kept me coming back from one episode to the next. Had nothing to do with the plot. I thought the plot was pretty uninteresting this season. Uh, And the plot basically comes down to Frank Castle versus Billy Russo again, except Billy Russo has amnesia. That's essentially the plot of season two. You have the Amy character and you have everything that's going on there. And even that felt really bizarre. The whole idea that all of that was based off of um, blackmail uh, of uh, a couple photos of a politician in a, uh, a homosexual relationship that felt a little bit outdated. Like, I just don't think that would be, um, I don't know, not to get into politics. I was going to say, I don't know how big a deal that would be today. Maybe it would be a big deal. I don't know. But that whole plot just felt kind of bizarre to me. Um, and then you just have Frank versus Billy Russo, which we already saw, and they didn't really do anything super interesting with that. Uh, But I was saying something positive about the show, so let me get back to that. John Barenthal killed it as the Punisher in Frank Castle this season. Uh, His acting was top-notch. I I, I said earlier that the supporting characters, the writing felt kind of poor for all the supporting characters. Um, So I don't know if they just put all of their writing chops into Frank Castle or if John Barenthal just acted so well he was able to elevate a, you know, a rough script into something better. 
but he was awesome. The action, I would say 80% of the time was also awesome. It was more of what we loved in season one. And one of the big problems with action sequences these days, the Marvel movies are guilty of it, is you know the crazy amount of cutting, just how over the top unrealistic it is with just these big CGI blobs fighting each other. You can't tell what's going on. The Netflix shows, at least Punisher and Daredevil, never suffered from that. And, and Punisher, you look at the gym fight scene, you look at the bar fight from episode one, which was awesome. I would say most of the time those fights were awesome. What's this? It's their first day on Periscope. Oh, welcome, Hunch Humane. Hope you're a Punisher fan. Um, action sequences were great most of the time. Sometimes you could pick up on the CGI blood splatter, at least it looked like CGI, and that gave the, gave the show a little bit of a cheap feel. But Frank's just singular mission, his anger, his rage that comes through in every fight, John Barenthal's grunting and his war screams, his, uh, his growling, he just sells every fight scene and did an amazing job. And, and even though, I think you can tell, you can start to see the picture I'm painting here that season two was a bit of a drag and I wasn't a big fan of it, I will probably go back and rewatch some scenes from season two from time to time the same way I did uh, for season one. So I'm trying to think if there's really anything, in, anything else in particular to, to point out in season two of Punisher. I mean, I'd say the bottom line for me is that John Barenthal killed it. Um, the, uh, the, the villain character and the Amy character both started out uninteresting for at least the first half of the season, got better towards the end. Um, but outside of that, outside of Frank Castle, his fight scenes, the rest of the show I just thought dragged. I found pretty much all of it uninteresting. Madani, who I thought was a, was a pretty interesting character and a, a character who I, I liked to follow in season one. In season two, again, she was just a drag. I just wasn't a fan. Uh, her acting didn't seem as on point as it did in season one, but I don't think that was because of the actress. I think that was because of the writing for her character. They just didn't give her anything interesting to do, everything about her. We're talking about Punisher season two on Netflix, as you can tell from the shirt here. And I'll use that as a good point to pause and just get more of my, my nitro. So Punisher, season two. What series are you talking about? So once again, we're talking about Punisher, season two on Netflix from the, uh, from the, from the slew of Marvel shows on Netflix. Um, and before we move on, so uh, just to, to finish putting a cap on that, uh, wanted to love season two really wanted to love it, convinced myself I loved it for a bit, especially, I mean, episode one, I'll still say, was a great episode, but by the end, um, it's not a great season. I would say, overall, a, a pretty bad season. In fact, uh, in fact, welcome, Lou Uax19, first damn Periscope. Bonjour. Um, really wanted to love it, so, uh, but I didn't. And unfortunately, it might be the last time we see John Barenthal as Punisher because Daredevil was canceled, Iron Fist was canceled, Luke Cage was canceled. Um, there's this guy on Reddit who's, or a guy or gal, I don't know, on Reddit who's uh, a leaker apparently from um, Disney or Netflix, I'm not sure. And they've, they've given scoops before that have all turned out to be true. Apparently, they have a pretty good track record. They've said that Punisher and Jessica Jones are already canceled, that the decision has been made internally, just hasn't been announced yet. Now, I don't know if we need a leaker to tell us that. I think it's pretty obvious that if Daredevil's canceled and it had a larger viewership than Punisher, um, uh, maybe sometimes. I like series, maybe. Yeah, you should definitely, I will say you should check, if you haven't watched The Punisher, you should check it out. Season one at, at a minimum, because it was... Season one was fantastic. The issue really started with uh, with season two. Um, so, like I said, I don't know if we'll ever get to see this character again, played by John Barenthal. I, I personally, I, I do have hope that they'll come back. You know, you, we keep hearing these rumors about maybe Disney will pick up Daredevil, Punisher, and some of the other Marvel Netflix series um, down the road. Now, at first, people were saying that's not going to happen. 
because Disney's starting their own streaming network, Disney Plus. They're saying that uh, they're saying that there's no chance Disney Plus would ever air something like Daredevil or The Punisher because these are very mature shows Disney Plus is geared towards audiences. But what a lot of people forget is that Hulu, now that Disney's acquiring Fox, Disney's going to have a very large stake in Hulu, the majority, the majority share of Hulu. Um, so they've said they're going to use Hulu as a platform for some of their more mature shows, and we've already seen some of that. Disney, I think it was just this week or maybe the week before, just announced um, five animated Marvel shows that are aimed towards a more mature audience are coming to Hulu. I don't remember all of them, but one of them is Howard the Duck, which is going to be um, in part produced by Kevin Smith. They're going to have four different animated series about these kind of anti-heroes, and then have them all come together in a mini-series called The Offenders, which sounds familiar, right? That's exactly what they did on Netflix, except this is a more humorous take. Netflix was you know, pun uh, Daredevil, Luke Cage, Iron Fist, Jessica Jones, get their own series, then come together in The Defenders. So now we have The Offenders, the more humorous animated version of, of what we just described. But the important point there is that maybe there is hope. Maybe Disney will pick up at a minimum Daredevil, hopefully Punisher, and bring them onto Hulu. I think the only limitation there is that in the deal between Marvel and Netflix, Netflix basically said when we cancel, if we ever cancel these shows, there's some kind of moratorium. There's some amount of time that has to pass before Disney is allowed to use those characters. The rumor out there is that they have to wait two years, which means we'd have to wait till about 2020 to see a Daredevil show. But the fact that Disney hasn't ruled it out, the fact that Disney said in their press release when Daredevil was canceled, you know, we look forward to more stories with Daredevil. Everyone interpreted that line as Disney's going to reboot the series at some point. But the fact that they've been asked in interviews, Hulu's been asked in interviews about picking up these shows, no one's denied it. And I think there is a big viewer base out there. I personally think the shows are gonna come back. And if they do, the one thing I'd want to see different is shorten the seasons. If you can't figure out how to fill out 13 episodes of Punisher or Daredevil and keep the pacing up, then just shorten the season. There's no reason it has to be 13 episodes. Make it 10, make it 8. I think the Punisher in particular, he worked so well in Daredevil Season 2. So maybe the future of the Punisher is, uh, is guest appearances on Daredevil. Now, I'd still want to see a solo Punisher series, but maybe it's a six-episode miniseries. I, I mean, I do think you could do a 13-episode season of Punisher, and in the right hands, you could make that work. Maybe it's two storylines, first six episodes, the last six or seven. Maybe it's one long storyline, but there is a few um, tangents throughout where you have kind of one-off stories. Love Russian Vodka? You know, I don't know, actually, because I've had vodka, of course, and I wouldn't say I love vodka or hate vodka, um, I think, uh, but I don't know if I've ever had Russian vodka. Should I have Russian vodka? Do you love Russian vodka? Um, we'll, wait to, we'll wait to hear back on that question. Uh, so I do think you could make a longer season of Punisher work. Uh, I don't know if we'll ever get to see that in the, in the near future, but I am holding out hope, and, and personally, I would put pretty good odds on these shows, at least Daredevil, making a comeback in the next couple of years. I don't know if I'm being overly optimistic, but that's the feeling I have. I just can't imagine those shows are done. Anyway, last night, uh, after I finished Punisher Season 2, I was pretty bummed out. I sent my brother a series of text messages where I essentially said, listen, now that I've finished the season, I'm a man enough to admit, I can finally admit, Punisher Season 2 was, was not great. It was not great. I may have used some worse words than that, but yeah, it just wasn't great. Uh, and to get the taste out of my mouth, I uh, went to Daredevil Season 3. So I never actually finished Daredevil Season 3. I watched the first two or three episodes, and then it got canceled. And this is a little silly, but the fact that Daredevil was canceled just to me made it depressing to watch the show just knowing that they're not going to get to tell the whole story they wanted to tell, uh, knowing that season three might, might, or, you know, might be the last. So I never went back and finished it. But last night, I went back, 
watched, I think it was episode four of Daredevil season two, and that show is great. Season, uh, Daredevil season three, sorry. Daredevil season two I thought was a little rough, but I watched the episode um, four from season three last night. It's amazing. I mean, to I watched a minute or two of that show and already I could tell this is just at another caliber when you compare it to Punisher season two. Daredevil season three, it constantly cuts to supporting characters. It almost feels like Charlie Cox, you know, Matt Murdock, Daredevil, he's, he's just one of the cast. You know, it felt like a quarter of the episode was about him and the rest of it, you know, Foggy Nelson. Um, for some reason, I'm drawing a blank on uh, the, uh, the female character's name. But um, the supporting characters are interesting. The actors did a great job. And then, and then the action, the whole prison sequence in Daredevil with the red lights flashing, that whole sequence was incredible. And even though I loved some of the action of, uh, of Punisher season two, it felt like Daredevil did an even better job. The whole, um, it seems like Daredevil, one of their things is that every season they have to have at least one example of a one take, no cut action sequence. And it's, it looks awesome every time. I'll never get sick of that. So Daredevil season three is killing it. And uh, I'll probably end up binge watching the rest of that season in the coming days. Uh, I think that's probably just about everything I have to say about Punisher season two. Uh, I think I think the next thing I'll probably talk about is uh, switching over from Marvel to the DC side of the world. So I haven't really watched anything on the DC Universe streaming platform. I tried getting into Titans. Uh, that's a show that the, when they released that first trailer and you could kind of see the cheesy violence over the top darkness they were going for, I could tell the show probably wasn't going to be for me. Uh, and I gave it a shot. I tried watching episode one, and I just wasn't a fan. So I didn't end up sticking with it. And uh, I used to watch some of the DC CW shows, Flash, Arrow, and they were kind of cheesy, a little bit, uh, you know, sort of silly. But but I was into them. You know, there's something that just feels good about watching good triumph over evil, um, and you don't necessarily need the complexity or the depth that you see with Daredevil or Punisher. You don't need that all the time. Um, but I don't watch those shows anymore. I've kind of lost, kind of jumped off, uh, jumped off the ship of uh, Arrow and Flash. But there is a new show which just premiered February 15th, so just yesterday or the day before, on uh, the DC Universe streaming platform, and that's Doom Patrol. And that show looks a little bit interesting. It's got a, a different tone than I think what we're used to on all these DC shows. It looks like it has a little bit more of a sense of humor. It looks like they're going for a sort of Suicide Squad, Guardians of the Galaxy type vibe. And I don't think I was going to check that show out, but I'm hearing it. It's actually getting pretty great reviews. And bonus points, it has Brendan Fraser in it. And that's a guy I miss. I loved him back in uh, The Mummy and that whole series of movies. And he kind of just disappeared from the face of the earth for a while. So Doom Patrol brings back Brendan Fraser doing something a little bit on the DC side and people are saying that it's a pretty good show worth checking out so I'm gonna check that out probably today and then maybe I'll be back later on today or tomorrow and I'll uh, give you my thoughts on that as well and hopefully it's more positive usually I try to be very positive uh, and I, I wanted to come on here I said good things about Punisher season 2 but sometimes you got to tell it like it is. That's what Frank Castle would do. And we should all strive to be a little bit more like Frank Castle in some ways, you know, besides the vigilante killing part. But the rest of it, we got to be like Frank Castle. So everyone, have a good day. And I will talk to you later. I'm going to finish my cold Brutus, Nitro Cold Brew. There we go. Nope. Never used Periscope before, so I'm just learning how to actually stop this.